the next lecture will be given by Ilya Peripechkin from Moscow. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I will tell you about uh, mini frog meta modeling with uh, record neural uh, network. Uh, this work was uh, done in cooperation with uh, Skolte and uh, Gazprom Neft Science and uh, Technology Center. Uh, first, uh, uh, let me show you how hydraulic fracture in uh, simulators solve a uh, problem. Uh, uh, problem of uh, hydraulic fraction modeling. Uh, for example, let's uh, use planar fluid simulator. Planar fluid simulator receives input data, which consists of geomechanical properties and pump schedule. And then using uh, its uh, physical models uh, and uh, numerical solutions of this, of the question that describes this numer uh, this physical models, uh, the planner for this simulator uh, returns uh, for user some uh, fracture geometry and pressure prediction and sometimes uh, other um, uh, properties of fracture. And uh, this. Uh, model is uh, good for uh, any uh, fracturing modeling, for usual fracturing, for mini frac, uh, and uh, they're un physically accurate enough for engineering cases. However, uh, this model is too slow for optimization cases, and uh, it's necessary to create model that uh, is uh, as accurate as. Uh, Mm, planar fluid model, but hundreds times faster. And the meta model, uh, and the good way to do this is to approximate the planar fluid model using machine learning, because this uh, approximation uh, meta model. Uh, it's just like the planar fluid model; it uh, receives uh, input data, parameter, preside in input data of uh, pumping and uh, mechanical data and uh, returns uh, simplified from desired fracturing geometry and uh, other properties. In comparison with uh, planar 3D, uh, such approximation uh, will be extremely fast and uh, nearly as accurate as planar 3D model in uh, working input range. However, the input range and the number of parameters of such approximations are, of course, limited. For example, uh, if meta model is trained to, to predict fracture growing in a three layer, layer medium, uh, so it won't be able to simulate in uh, other uh, fracturing in other types of medium. To build a uh, meta model, following steps must be performed. First one, uh, input data should be parameterized. Uh, then output data parameterization should be performed too. Then uh, we must show the meta model architecture and collect uh, data for training the meta model. Let's uh, briefly talk about uh, input parameters. Uh, the main uh, idea that uh, input, uh, input vector that uh, meta model receives uh, should have sh uh, shouldn't be have too big dimensions. So we should uh, decrease the dimension of the input vector. Um, there are two types of input parameters uh, of hydraulic fraction modeling. First is uh, geomechanical properties, and the second uh, type is pump and features. The main mechanical property is uh, uh, mean horizontal stress, or I will call it just stress, and it uh, usually has a, a great dimension. It's uh, uh, a lot of uh, numbers uh, with a small step or a length of, or, or over the well, so it's uh, hundreds of numbers. And to decrease its uh, dimension, we use a fast Fourier transform. And uh, we 
increase uh, high uh, spatial frequencies and uh, only 40 low frequencies harmonics of stress uh, as, uh, are used uh, as features. All other um, features of uh, geomechanics, such as elastic models and uh, leak of coefficients, uh, are just averaged to uh, one number. Uh, pumping features are quite simple because, uh, in this case, uh, we're creating meta model for minifrag, and so there is no propant, uh, uh, and uh, all features are responsible only for pipe and for uh, pumping of. Crossing to go. Uh, output data parameterization you can see here. Actually, meta model is created to predict just uh, six uh, parameters of many frac uh, fracture, and uh, all parameters are represented here. It's uh, four parameters that are responsible for geometry. It's uh, length, uh, height up, height down of fracture, and uh, uh, mean fracture aperture. Another two parameters are very important for mini frac analysis. Uh, it's uh, pressure, net, net bottom for pressure, and uh, fluid efficiency. And uh, all these uh, parameters are presented as time series uh, because it's very important to uh, predict pressure and fluid efficiency evolution during uh, um, mini fracking and during mini frac fracture settlement. Um, before I will show you method model architecture, uh, let's see how a planner 3D simulator, what is planner 3D simulator inside. So the main uh, part of planner for the simulator is integrator. It takes a uh, fracture state so in some moment of time and uh, it knows uh, injection state in that moment of time and go mechanics, which actually is constant. And then the integrator solves uh, propon transport, liquid transport, and uh, elastic uh, equations. And then it uh, gives the next fracture state that uh, will go in integrator the next uh, step. And so it's uh, one big iterative process. So the idea is to approximate uh, the integrator inside the planner for the simulator, but not the result of simulation itself. And uh, actually, uh, recurrent neural network architecture fits uh, in a planner for the architecture the best because uh, in case of recurrent neural networks each recurrent neural network cell uh, approximates uh, integrator of planner for the simulator and just like integrator it takes uh, injection and geomechanical properties it, it every cell gets a uh, fracture state on previous uh, step and uh, returns the fracture state on the next step. So uh, this model should uh, work quite uh, good and uh, should be accurate. There are two common types of uh, recurrent neural network cells. First one is uh, gate, gated uh, recurrent units, and the next one is uh, LSTM uh, cell or long short term memory. Uh, all these uh, cells are quite common and uh, they're widely used for time series prediction in different types of cases. And uh, we have tried uh, both uh, these uh, types of cells. Uh, but first, to take, let me briefly tell you about uh, data collection. Uh, of course, uh, we should generate a big data set of uh, pairs of input and output data to uh, fit uh, the neural network. Uh, input data was generated by just random sampling in some min-max range. So uh, here is, uh, for example, on the left uh, uh, picture is a uh, maximum amplitude, so it's uh, 
maximum of random sampling for uh, stress harmonics on the right side. You can see crosslink uh, rheology uh, area in which uh, uh, rheology was ra randomly sampled, and the ample data was just a planar for the simulator uh, results. So, uh, data set of for nearly uh, 60,000 samples uh, or pairs of output input data was generated. Um, uh, for model training, the data set was split on train and validation parts. Uh, we need validation parts to uh, be sure that the model uh, was not overfitted on our training set. Uh, we used Adam optimization method and uh, for loss function was used mean uh, absolute error. Uh, we used uh, metrics, uh, some special metric for relative error estimation. You can uh, see the uh, metric uh, below. And so now let's go to the examples of uh, LSTM model prediction. So if uh, uh, the model uh, works ideal, uh, yellow and blue line uh, will be the same, but you can see that uh, there is a slightly year of prediction, uh, but uh, the prediction is still uh, very accurate. And uh, here is an example of uh, prediction for uh, gate recurrent unit uh, type of uh, so, uh, as you can see, all um, models, all types of uh, recurrent network are good in predicting um, bikes and other features of uh, uh, fracture parameters evolution. Uh, here you can see zero histogram. Uh, as you can see, the relative year is uh, quite stable, uh, and uh, there are just a few cases when the relative year is uh, bigger than uh, than ten percent, for example, for uh, lengths and for Amplitude. Uh, for uh, fluid efficiency, the error is, uh, for most cases, uh, is less than 2%, uh, which is very impressive, actually. Uh, here is the results of uh, LSTM and GU models. Uh, actually, you can see that uh, GU network uh, shows the best results. The maximum error. Uh, is uh, zero of determining the length of fracture and which is less than eight uh, percent, and zero of, for example, determining uh, fluid efficiency is less than one percent. So the gate recurrent unit uh, rec recurrent neural network was used uh, in the final version of uh, the meta model. Uh, so uh, the mini frac meta model based on planar fluid day model was created. Uh, the computation time of uh, meta model is dozens of many seconds in comparison with uh, seconds or tens of seconds for planar fluid model. And uh, it's almost as accurate as planar fluid model. So uh, this meta model can be used in uh, mini FRAC analysis because uh, the physical reliability is um, it's almost as fast as usually used in such cases, analytical and several 3D models, but it's as physical reliable as planner 3D model. So thank you very much. I would like to hear your questions. Okay, thank you very much, Ilya. Very interesting presentation. So now we have uh, almost five minutes for questions. So your questions, please. We have a question from Sevalot. Please, you can ask. Uh, good afternoon, Ilya. Uh, I've got uh, one question about the uh, performance of your 
neural network. Uh, um, every neural network uh, has uh, tuning heavy parameters, and uh, I've got the question: uh, Have you changed uh, the um, tuning heavy parameters? And it, if you have you done this? Uh, could you tell about the changes of the, uh, the did it make the changes in the performance of your neural network? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, which parameters do you mean? You mean parameters of? Uh, uh, of course, we have changed the parameters. We have tried to uh, find uh, optimal one, optimal number of uh, layers, optimal. Uh, uh, have optimized, yes, yeah, these uh, parameters of uh, neural networks uh, uh, to have the best results, yeah. So, do you mean this? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, uh, I haven't seen uh, these, uh, these actions uh, in your presentation, well. Yeah, it is a bit yeah, I've got a lot of information in my presentation, so yeah, some information. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, agree that uh, there is too much information which we include and uh, game mechanics and uh, uh, and the machine learning, so it's it's quite uh, complicated uh, task to fill the presentation. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any thank further you. questions? Okay, let me ask probably. So as I understood, uh, your model predicts uh, the whole uh, pressure curve, right? Yes. And as I, as I know, probably I'm wrong, but uh, in when people interpret this uh, mini frag, they don't need the whole curve. They need just some uh, uh, kind of characteristic features of this curve. So maybe it would be easy in some sense to predict not the whole curve but only some some features like uh, some drops or the rate of decay or something like that have you tried something in oh, this oh yes it, maybe it would be easier but we have successfully predicted the whole curve so yes well maybe when we have planned to do this maybe uh, we should mm -hmm. think about what you're talking but uh, we have successfully uh, predicted full curve and uh, we haven't mm -hmm. have some problems in this so and, and now also, you, uh, you said that you trained your model uh, using like 50,000 uh, simulations and uh, the test was 6,000 uh, is it uh, correct yes yes, and, yes that's right so, so what does it mean if i will use this model for I don't know some parameters for which you have not tested it or you, for which you have not fitted it. Will it work? And what will be the accuracy? Okay, we've got so some. What is the range of applicability of this uh, meta model? Okay, we have learned it to fit most of many frags. Uh, for example, we have taken range of volume of many frags to be to have. Uh, most uh, mini frags that are performed uh, be inside this range. So, but if you will take some uh, special mini frag that is not in the range, of course, the meta model won't predict it accurately. But but if if it will be in the range, uh, it will predict it with the accuracy that uh, I have uh, represented you here. But outside this range, uh, this is unpredictable and. Uh, uh, usually it will show you something wrong, of course. Okay, thank you.